promotional consideration paid for by the following. Hello and welcome once again to Quick Shot Reviews. As ever, you are the Cheap Shot Nation and I am your host, Luke. We have a new release. It's not in the cinema, but it is available on HBO in America and also available to rent from many, many sources here in the UK. I took the plunge and rented this film because it was new. I want to see something new and uh, it was reasonably disappointing for me. For fans it's going to be great and I will get to that later on in the review. But for now you're probably wondering what it is that I watched and it was Godzilla vs King Kong. And uh, yeah, I... Mm, I, like I say, I'll get to it. If you want to hear my views on Godzilla vs. King Kong, a brand new spanking shiny film, then join us for the main part of the video. But in the meantime, click that subscribe button and like the video and hit the notification bell to know when we upload new content to the channel. Godzilla vs. King Kong was a, or is a 2021 film. It's, journey, it's literally only just been released as of recording this video. And it was directed by Adam Wingard, who has a quite a directoral catalogue behind him. None of these films of which I like, which probably explains this film and my thoughts on this film. It stars Alexander Skarsgård as Nathan Land, Millie Bobby Brown, of course, from Stranger Things, and as Madison Russell, Rebecca Hall as Eileen Andrews, the Kong Whisperer, and uh, Kaylee Hottle as Gia, the young orphan from Kong's Island, who had a very who has a very interesting storyline, which again I will mention in a little while. Uh, Julian Dennison is Josh Valentine, the sidekick to Millie Bobby Brown's Madison Russell. And Brian Tyree Henry as Bernie Hayes, the conspiracy theory podcaster. Um, sure, I've seen that in a film before. Hey, you like freaks. Um, but, you know, there you go. <laughs> it's, it's an interesting thing, you know, he has all these theories and they all turn out to be true. And... And then Millie Bobby Brown's character, uh, Madison Russell, is listening to these, so they go and seek him out, and all that kind of stuff. Now, this is the biggest problem I have with this film. It's not with King Kong or with Godzilla. They actually look really good, and I quite like the character design of these monsters, these, you know, big, huge creatures that want to fight each other. I have no problem with that. I'm a big wrestling fan. And I would say this was more WrestleMania 9, Undertaker versus Giant Gonzalez, rather than something bigger. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean that's that's it. I mean you know you could have like Hogan versus Andre, for example, but we got Undertaker versus Giant Gonzalez. If you're a wrestling fan, you'll know what I mean about this one. So this is the official description of the film and the epic next chapter of the cinematic monsterverse. That's the thing that they're trying to build up. I don't know how many more monsters there is apart from Godzilla and King Kong, mind. So I'm not quite sure how they're going to build the monsterverse unless they're going to bring some new original characters, which I wouldn't be opposed to as not a massive fan. I would say I'm not a massive fan of these kind of films, it's just that I don't really watch them. Um, but I can appreciate big big monsters, huge fan of Tremors for example, watch the uh, Tremors series reviews on Cheap Shot um, Entertainment and Quick Shot Reviews of course. Um, 
So the greatest icons in motion picture history. Yeah, that, that's pretty accurate. Fearsome Godzilla and the Mighty Kong with humanity caught in the balance. The thing is, they're not actually caught in the balance. So that's a massive lie straight away. And you can kind of predict this one. If this was the Prediction League, as I've just done a video for Squared Circle Jobbers, so go and check that one out. If this was a Prediction League, I would have got full marks for this one because the last film that Godzilla was in was called King of the Monsters. Now, they're not going to give him the championship title and then have him take it, have it taken away by a giant gorilla. Um, interestingly though, something that I did find out is Godzilla is like 300 feet tall and Kong is actually ho only about 150 feet tall. So they explained that by saying, oh, he's still growing. Because um, otherwise, obviously, there would be no competition, really. Godzilla would just squash him. Um, <clears throat> but, yeah, it would be a squash match. Now, the film itself is pretty darn boring until the last, sort of, half an hour when we actually do get the fight. Mecha Godzilla is in this one as well. He feels very shoehorned in for the sake of having an evil villain who wants to take over... Um, the monster verse and show that human beings are the superior monsters and things because storylines that didn't happen. Um, yeah, good thing updated the CGI, brilliant, absolutely loved the design of the monsters, like I said. Um, but this one, it we fantastic for the fans, I'm sure, and I've heard a lot of fans go, Oh, yeah, this is really, really good. But as someone who's jumped in because it was available, this has not made me a convert to any of the new Godzilla or King Kong films. Um, like I say, fans will love it. Um, it just didn't feel like it was worthy of the hype that it managed to garner over the last sort of month or so. I do like the fancy elements, the fact that there's a literal monster verse in the middle of the earth where you know things are floating and Kong is actually sitting on a big throne as, as king of this monster verse which was interesting you got to see a little bit of Kong ripping the heads off of other monsters um, Godzilla just sort of turns up and, and destroys some things but he's still good you know Godzilla is still is still a face it's still a face, but I mean, in terms of this, Godzilla is definitely the heel, and uh, King Kong is more of the face in this in this epic epic encounter. The only thing they're missing is three ropes and four turnbuckles. Um, <coughs> sorry, four posts and three turnbuckles on each. Um, despite having a lot of really good young talent in this one, some of the best that Hollywood has to offer. The characters that they played were not given a lot of story, they weren't built very well, and yet most of the film revolves around them. There was, there was not much to get people, like, like me, say I've not seen the other films building up to this, and just wanted something to watch. This does not give me any background as to why they're doing it. The only interesting storyline which was never explored is Gia, the young orphan from Kong's Skull Island from um, before they bought him and put him in this sort of artificial island thing to, to keep him safe, I think. Um, she taught Kong some sign language. Only one thing, mind. Um, but I thought that could have been explored as a big reveal and everyone's going, oh no, they've taught him sign language and it's a really nice heartfelt moment that's never explored again. The next thing we see is Kong chained up on a big ship being taken to go and fight Godzilla, the very thing they're trying to stop happening in the first place. It just makes no sense. Um, <clears throat> like I say, the, it was a big diff disappointment for me overall. I thought this one was actually going to be much better. We could have got Rock versus Hogan, we could have got Hogan versus Andre, instead we got WrestleMania 9 and that is my final verdict on this one. If you like WrestleMania 9 
then you'll love this if you think that WrestleMania 9 is actually the worst WrestleMania in history. I certainly think it's one of the worst. It was my very first WrestleMania that I managed to watch, I think, live. So, you know, it has a big soft spot for me, but we digress into wrestling rather than movies. Um, King Kong has a big soft spot for me as well, having been on the original ride at Universal Studios and things like that. Godzilla, I appreciate that he's a giant monster that attacks Japan and, you know, he's pop culture. And they could have done so much more with this film, it's unbelievable. But like I say, my final verdict is WrestleMania 9. If you must watch this, then do. If you don't want to watch it, then don't be taken in by the hype. Um, if you've seen it already, let us know in the comments section down below. Let us know what you think. Or you can join us on social media, at Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. And leave us a comment there. Once again, you have been the Cheap Shot Nation. Thank you once again for joining us. I have been your host, Luke. And I will see you next time.